I'm joined now by Governor Andrew Cuomo. Governor, good to see you. Um, you have already you had already said even before today that you know this is like a flu on steroids. But what does this now declaration of you know state of emergency mean for your state? Uh, good afternoon, Fred. The state of emergency gives us additional flexibility to do things faster, purchasing, hiring of staff, etc. Uh, and for us, the challenge is what the challenge is for every state. Uh, test as many people as you can. Once you find a person who's tested positive, run down that chain. Test as many as you can, as quickly as you can, just to get them into a place where they no longer infect other people. Uh, and that's what we're doing. At the same time, Fred, it's important that we don't uh, feed this uh, undue hysteria and fear that is out there, right? If you're infected with the coronavirus, 80% self-resolve, 20% could get ill, uh, and the vulnerable populations are senior citizens, people who have uh, immune systems that are compromised or underlying illnesses. So we have to keep that basic reality uh, uh, in check. Well, this fear and hysteria among some people is really because they don't feel like they know enough and maybe they're a little confused about, you know, if they need to be tested, if there are enough tests, etc. You know, there were 21 new coronavirus cases in your state alone today, you know, bringing the total to 76 statewide. That in and of itself is enough to alarm many. So how do you allay the fears? Yeah, I think uh, facts allay the fear here, right? If you understand the facts, you would be calm. If you understand the bottom line, what happens if I get the coronavirus, okay? If I get the coronavirus, 80% of the people who get the coronavirus will self-resolve, 20% will be ill uh, and may be hospitalized. Uh, the, the mortality is primarily among senior citizens, immune compromised, and people with underlying illnesses. That is the bottom line. Well, then why all this running and testing, et cetera? Because we want as few people infected as possible. Uh, but I think in some ways, uh, the anxiety is outpacing the reality of this situation. I think part of it is people don't know who to believe, you know, uh, and they're listening to all these uh, experts. Uh, I also think, frankly, part of it is they don't trust what they're hearing from the federal government. So I also think the federal you government directly? further complicated it. Well, what, are your, what, are, what are your constituents telling or asking of you? What clarity are they looking for from you, the governor of New York? Well, they're saying, I don't know what to believe. Uh, the CDC says this, but this one says this. Uh, the bottom line question is, what happens if I get the coronavirus or my spouse or my child gets the coronavirus? And that's why the fundamental fact is most important, right? Uh, if you look at the number of cases we have in New York, uh, we have 76 cases. Uh, we only have a handful who are hospitalized. If you look at John uh, Hopkins that has been tracing all of the coronavirus cases, uh, 100,000 cases. Uh, you see that the overwhelming majority are uh, had stayed at home, they had symptoms, they're feeling better, mm -hmm. and now actually more are recovering than are getting the new infection. So the ultimate reality we can deal with, mm -hmm. it's this current hysteria and confusion. Mm -hmm. uh, frankly, the CDC, I don't think has been helpful here because they have sent mixed messages. They say on one hand, Anybody who needs a test, call your doctor and get a test. Uh, the vice president then goes on TV and says, oh, by the way, we can't uh, test enough people. Mm -hmm. That kind of confusion or uh, the sense that your government is not competent, mm -hmm. that is what is not helpful here. So uh, a lot of folks are concerned. I can't help but be concerned about my 87-year-old mother who likes to go to the senior center, who likes to, you know, socialize with other seniors, who likes, you know, the exercise classes, but is pulling back from doing that right now. And then we, we're also hearing that, you know, a number of people in Washington State were at an elderly facility uh, where, you know, they have seen a, a spike and a large number of deaths. In Westchester County, there in New York, you've got, what, 57 cases uh, in that county. Are you finding any common thread, uh, what the source is, why such a concentration in Westchester County? Westchester County is a, uh, a cluster scenario uh, where you had uh, people who 
attended large gatherings together and it spread from those gatherings. You know, uh, bar mitzvah that had 400 people in it. Uh, so that is a unique case and we're dealing with it. But your po point is right, Fred. Uh, personally, what have I done? I've spoken to my mother who is elderly. Uh, don't tell her I said that. Uh, she doesn't consider seasoned. herself elderly. I like the word she doesn't seasoned. act elderly. Yes. <laughs> seasoned. But uh, the, as senior citizens have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Yes, where they go, how they expose themselves, et cetera. Uh, people who are immune compromised, if you're fighting cancer, if you're HIV positive, et cetera, you have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Governmentally, nursing homes, I'm very worried about. Yeah. Senior living facilities, I'm worried about. That's, that's where we have our greatest mm -hmm. vulnerability. And what do you turn uh, that worry in meantime, into? I just, mean, what can you do proactively, or what can be recommended, you know, proactively for those areas that you are most concerned about and worried about? Well, for example, in the nursing homes, we have a whole new protocol on how staff uh, should be operating within that nursing home. Uh, this morning, in areas where we have high clusters, uh, we said no outside visitors in the nursing home. Uh, I know that's difficult on one level, you know, family members can't uh, visit, but uh, no outside visitors. Because if one person brings in the virus in a nursing home, yeah. then we're going to be off to the races. That I can tell you. All right, we're all um, paying attention, trying to discern the fact, right? And make sure that people are not um, too fearful, but cautious. Governor Andrew Cuomo, thank you so much, appreciate it.